Hey everybody, I'm Seth Jones, Editor-in-Chief of Landscape Management Magazine. Welcome to another Home Edition Zoom interview. I'm very pleased to welcome my next guest. He is the President and CEO of Gunder Landscaping Company, a company that he started with his brother in 1984 with a $25 push mower. The company has grown into one of the premier design-build landscape firms in the Midwest. He also runs the Grow Group, a business consulting company with clients around the country. He's a talented, charismatic speaker, and I'm also proud to say that uh, in every issue of Landscape Management Magazine, you can find his column on the back page, Grow with Grunder. So he's one of our guys. It's my pleasure to welcome our friend, Marty Grunder. Marty, thanks for taking the time to chat with me today. You got it, Seth. I guess, first off, I ought to like also vocally repay my bet since your Kansas Jayhawks beat my Dayton Flyers. So what is it? Rock Talk Jay? What do you say? We say Rock Chalk Jayhawk. Rock Chalk Jayhawk. So I'll say that. So okay, I'll still say I'll go it. Flyers, but I'll, but I'll give you some kudos to your Kansas Jayhawks. Thanks. It's, I know you were as sad as I was when they canceled the tournament this year. Your, your Dayton Flyers, they, they had a real shot this year. Oh my gosh. Well, it'll, we're just in Dayton, Ohio, we feel like we won the national championship. So that's what we're going to, that's what we're going to think. So go Flyers. You, know what? you might as well. It's, 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 it's something right. that, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll take it. Uh, you know, right. was, if, if it wasn't that long ago that you and I were on a stage together in Charlotte, North Carolina, um, a lot's changed since then. Um, it's amazing. You know, you, you think back to grow that we finished up our annual event for the owners and leaders of landscaping companies. And, you know, two weeks later, we're experiencing a pandemic. And I don't know if you noticed or not, but there was actually quotes in the New York Times from some of those Charlotte hotels that our event was around where how it hit them so hard. So just amazing uh, how much things have changed since then, Seth. Yeah. And, and another thing uh, that, you know, I think I, I appreciate you uh, jumping on this with me because we were actually scheduled to be in Cincinnati. Uh, my, my publisher, Bill Roddy, and I were planning on coming out and seeing you. Uh, instead, we're doing it this way. But uh, I'm kind of curious, what did you have in store for us for, for our trip? Well, to we, we were, you know, we have the landscaping company, which serves as our living laboratory where we, you know, I'm still actively involved in the landscaping company. And then as you well know, I have the grow group, which is our consultancy. And we work with the owners and leadership teams of landscaping companies across the country. So we were gonna show you around our new offices um, in Cincinnati, Ohio for the grow group. We have a, a really nice setup that affords us the opportunity to do training on site. Um, and we were gonna spend some time showing you that, um, take you for some good lunches, maybe a beverage. Um, but more so work with you on what our plan is. Um, we consider landscape management one of our strategic partners in that we write in, in your fine magazine and, and your magazine is just, it's a terrific way for our clients to learn and get better. And we like to, we like to talk with you, as you well know, Seth, about the industry and where it's going. You have a great handle on, on the industry itself. So it's interesting. I appreciate you saying that, Marty. And uh, I'll tell you, like this, this interview right here, you guys have done, we've really been impressed and we've been watching what you're doing for not just your clients of the grow group, but for the industry in general, just sharing, you know, just sharing knowledge and doing a and a doing all the, uh, you guys, I don't know, you must sleep one hour a night. I'm, I'm impressed by the amount of stuff that you guys can put well, out. Well, um, thank you. I'm, I'm very driven, Seth, and uh, we're trying to practice um, what we preach. Uh, we have a sign in our grow group offices that says, eat your own cooking. It's right in the kitchen. Um, and so we're trying to do, we think the best way to teach is to do what you feel your students should be doing. So we're trying to get information out there that's helpful. Um, you know, we're not, none of us are making a lot of money right now. Uh, our landscaping company has been deemed essential in Dayton, Ohio, but we can't do construction projects. So we're operating at about 50% capacity. And because of that, um, we're, I mean, we're not making a lot of money. Um, we've had events in the grow group that are canceled. A lot of our coaching clients, we're working with them full speed ahead. Um, but we want people to remember how we help them now and hopefully we make some friends. And we're not keeping score set, but when we get on the other side of this, and we will, this is temporary. 
And now, is it a three month, a six month, a one year deal? I don't know that, but this isn't gonna go on forever. You know, it's just not. And we hope that we make some friends along the way and people remember that and we'll see what happens. Great, great. And I want to encourage, I'm sure anyone who's watching this right now, you, you know you know who Marty is, but if you haven't had a chance, visit uh, growgroupinc.com and check out the resources they have on their website. You can really get lost in, in the amount of, uh, of information that they've put out there. And, you know, I, I'm supposed to be the journalist over here, Marty, and, and we're, we're copying you right now. So, so tip of the cap to oh. you guys. I, I'm going to try and well, do my job now uh, and, and start. And, you're, and I want to just, you're doing fine. Oh, oh, I have I some very to... talented. I have some very talented people that make me look smart. So I get the credit, which is not always right. So <laughs> okay, good. That's that's a good tip right there. I do the same thing. Um, I, I want to ask you a couple of questions about some things that we've heard and seen. And, and one of the things you mentioned in one, in one of your talks is that you were sending your crews out with a laminated piece of paper, just basically stating that hey, we're we're allowed to be doing what we're doing right now. And I'm just curious if that is still a, a standard operating procedure for you guys and how that's going yeah. and, and what it's like. So we have a, what we call the COVID-19 protocol and it's developed to the extent, I think I have about 20 of our people that can recite the top 14 things that we have to do. And we go around in a circle every morning before we leave the shop and, and we don't even need the notes anymore. That's how well we know this. The letter from um, CISA that Andrew Bray from NALP got done. Andrew Bray, listen, everyone watching this, if you're not a member of the National Association of Landscape Professionals, you need to join just for the advocacy that they do. And he was able to, to get landscaping deemed essential at a federal level, which is a major breakthrough. So we have that letter in all of our trucks in case somebody stops us and says, you're not allowed to be doing that. We also have a letter from the health departments in the corresponding counties that we work. Um, we wanted our team to know we're doing this right. And we want anybody that should happen to challenge us on that also know that we're doing it right. So that's the reason for the letters. Uh, Marty, I wonder, do you have any stories? I mean, have you had guys come back to the shop and say, hey, I got, I got grilled by somebody today? And I, ha I mean, I'm just wondering if there's any personal stories that have come about. The only story I can share with you that would be would merit a discussion was we had almost 200 work tickets. So a work ticket, we run Aspire, which is an industry specific software. A work ticket is a job. So with the COVID-19 deal, we had over 200 tickets that were getting moved in the schedule. So I had about 175 phone calls I had to make to clients telling them that their spring cleanup's gonna be pushed back, their paver patio is going to get pushed back, whatever it is. At about call 101, I got into a guy that was not too happy with me. He said we had no business working, we shouldn't be out doing this, that I didn't know what the law was, this wasn't right. I don't know where you got your decision-making process, Mr. Grunder, but it's failed. And I didn't enjoy talking to him. I took deep breaths, I practiced my tactical breathing that I learned from a police sergeant a couple of years ago, and I just let him run all over me. I told him I was sorry he felt that way, that we didn't take this decision lightly. I hand wrote him a note telling him I'm sorry he felt that way. Um, he told us he didn't want us working in his property. And a week later, he called back and he sheepishly said, it looks like I misread the order and I can see where you folks are legally permitted to work and I'd like my yard worked on. That was the only bit of negativity that, that we've gotten. We haven't gotten any phone calls or anything like that. Um, I take that back. We did have what we think was an employee that worked for us two days, reported us to the health department saying we weren't working safely, we had no protocols in place, and all this other stuff. The health department came out, took one look, and two minutes later said, you are doing way more than I've seen anywhere else. There'll be no write up, carry on. So we did have that, I forgot about that one. But um, overall, it's been great. And we've done a good job communicating with our clients. We've done a good job, I think, talking to our people. And you know, uh, we interviewed in our webinar series, Doug Black, the CEO of Site One. 
Um, you can go to our website and watch it if you're watching this. It's a terrific interview. And Doug said something there. He said, take care of your people and take care of your customers. And if you do that, you'll leave yourself from this COVID-19 crisis with your company fully intact and you'll be able to go. And that really resonated with me in terms of the simplicity that Doug was able to draw out of a strategy that you can take to battle this. So um, I wish we wouldn't have had this to deal with, Seth, but I'll tell you, there are some opportunities and there are some things we're learning at the landscaping company. There's some things we're seeing some of our clients in the grow group doing that are absolutely amazing. And I think if you know how to listen, to watch, to learn, you can, you can leave this crisis with some things that are better. Marty, I appreciate those stories. And, and you know, it's interesting that your, your customer that came full circle for you there, you don't know when, when, when people are, there's a lot of, you know, fear. And when people get afraid, their, their reactions, you don't really know what's going to come out. But, they, but you know, there's a guy who came full circle for you and you handled it like a professional. And, you know, he, you could have lost him as a customer because that's your right. But you kept a customer there and he came back to you. So I'm wondering if, if in, in what you're talking about on just a, an opportunity here, but I'm wondering if you could give me your philosophy on now that we're a few weeks into this right now, how do you feel the homeowner is now viewing their green space at their own home? Is, is, that, is that changing in a sense because so many people all of a sudden find themselves at home 24 seven? I can't say that I see it changing completely, but we definitely are seeing folks that are more in tune with how the yard looks like. Our clients in the grow group around the country, we have story after story of um, customers calling our clients, the owners and leaders of landscaping companies, to tell them they can't wait till they can work in their yard and that they're not gonna go on their cruise that they were gonna spend $20,000 on and they wanna spend it in their yard. I mean, I could, I could give you probably 30 stories of that if I dug deep enough into my notes. So I think there is a silver lining here. And I think also, you know, a lesson in terms of philosophy, if, if at Grunder Landscaping Company, we would have not made the technological advancements that we've made the last couple of years, predominantly with our Aspire software and our quest to try to be paperless. Uh, sorry to use foul language, but I would be screwed right now because we were doing so many things manually that virtually you couldn't do. There, there's just no way. Our schedule board is electronic and it's real time. The data that we're getting in terms of analyzing jobs and what needs to be done is, is real time. I can go in right now and make a note on a ticket for a job and it's, it's immediately updated on all the tablets and everything. It's on the cloud, it's live. Had we not spent the time, money and effort to, to embrace technology, I'm, I think we'd be in a lot of trouble right now. Um, we seamlessly went into working remotely, I mean like that. Good, very good. You know, it's so, funny, that's, that's, that's all good timing and uh, I won't sit, pretend to have good timing like you do, but I can tell you about a month ago, I went and bought a new office chair and I'm glad I got it when I did because it's-, it's There you go. Stuff like that, you know, you talk about an electronic job board, you know, I mean, it, it, it's funny that um, things like, you know, heck this Zoom call right now. I, I didn't, I wasn't using Zoom a month ago. This, this, I wasn't either. Seth, I wasn't using Zoom two months ago, and last night I was on a webinar. I have a, a very successful professional speaker friend that held a free Zoom webinar, and there were all sorts of professional speakers on it, and I didn't touch Zoom two months ago. Um, I had Emily from our team on the call with me as well, and we knew more than most people on that call. Um, so, you know, I'm not a kid. I'm 52 years old Saturday. So... Um, I, technology doesn't come as easy to me as say it does the 25 year old and I figured out a way to use it. And, you know, I've talked to clients this way. I've talked to vendors this way. I'm talking to you this way. That's what I'm getting at. Like there are some new permanent ways to run our businesses better that we're learning from this opportunity. For sure. For sure. Uh, Marty, you touched on it a, a minute ago when you were talking about, you said you could get about 30 different uh, case cases of things that are, uh, of what the customers are doing with your network uh, and the grow group from around the country. Can we go back to that a little bit? I want to know just, um, can you, 
talk, talk to me about what, what are you hearing with your network in the Grow Group? Well, for starters, the ones that are winning are the ones that have a positive can-do attitude. Uh, I was on the line yesterday with one of our peer groups. We had them all on in a happy hour. Um, his, the bank he was with had messed up his PPP application. It didn't get through. He wasn't getting the money. He said, I will probably get it on the second wave of funding, but if I don't, oh well, I'm still going forward with my business. I believe in myself and I'm going to figure out a way to win. It's those can-do attitudes that I'm seeing. Um, so that is one thing that's very, very important. You would think in a time like this, it wouldn't be a time that you would give back. Yet we have a contractor in Auburn, Alabama, War Eagle. Sorry, my daughter's in Auburn, uh, was an Auburn tiger. Um, they went around to the hospitals and they asked for names and addresses of healthcare professionals working at the hospital that haven't been able to cut their grass that they'd like to cut their grass. And the response was so great, they teamed up with other landscaping professionals and other people that were, that were laid off that are out mowing the lawns of doctors and nurses in Auburn, Alabama. So those are just two stories, okay? I have another little contractor that wanted to spend some time on the phone making sure he had a written out strategic plan for how he could leave whenever this COVID-19 crisis is over. And he said, I want to get on this rocket ship that you're talking about, Marty, that we got to be planning so that when this is over, I'm ready to go. I want to be ready to go. So, I mean, I could go on and on. It, it, it roots in an attitude. And I think the attitude, Seth, is you can have an attitude of scarcity or you can have an attitude of abundancy. The person with the attitude of scarcity says, I don't want to help anyone else. I sure as heck don't want to mow lawns with my competitors. Why would I want to make them look good? That's not a good thing. The perspective of abundancy says, I'm going to do the right thing no matter what. And, and we're all going to get better. When I was first started out with the Grow Group, I was somewhat afraid to share what we were doing at Grunder because I was a cocky jerk and thought that I had these things figured out. I don't have any of this figured out. I'm just a really, really good reporter. I see things. I learn from them. I have smart people around me. It helps decipher them into uh, attainable lessons, bite-sized lessons that the owners and leaders of landscaping companies can learn from, and we get better. We get better when we just do the right thing. So the scarcity mindset versus the abundancy mindset, that's probably the biggest thing that I see out there, that the PPP check that you got is not winning the lottery. Don't go buy your wife a new Range Rover, like my strategic partner and executive coach Jim Cali says. He says he's telling all of our clients, don't buy a Range Rover. Make sure you know where every single penny of that money's going, and you might need it. Plan, plan for the worst, but expect the best. Um, you know, there's a fine line there between being a pessimist and an optimist. You got to be real about things, but the ones that I'm seeing that are winning are the ones that have a good attitude. So, Marty, you, you know, you use the term winning because this game is not over yet. We don't know how long it's going to last and, and what, you know, I, I saw something that we're in the second inning maybe of, of a nine inning game here. You know, who, who knows what, what's accurate there. But I'm just wondering, um, you know, on, on a positive note here, uh, do you, you want to give any shout outs to anybody? You know, uh, you, you shouted out to Aspire and NALP and Emily's doing a great job. We, we, we like what she's doing, but like in terms of your partners and others, does anyone come to mind? Is like, you know, I, hey, you know, you, first of all, my, yeah, my team at Grunder Landscaping, Seth, uh, Amber and Dalton, my leadership team, they've been unbelievably positive and they've taken this thing on like crazy. Jim Cali, Jason New and Chris Penchik, our executive coaches, um, you know, I've been around a lot of positive people. Um, we have had numerous clients that we've just tried to give them everything that we can give them in the grow group. And I've gotten texts, emails, got some handwritten notes. So, you know, we're all in this together. Um, you know, like I said, I'm, I just, I think I'm a good reporter and I'm a pretty good facilitator and we've been able to facilitate a lot of discussions. And so when, when we do these various happy hours or these Zoom hangouts that we've been doing, um, it may look like I'm helping them, but I'm always learning. And 
that's what happens, I think, when you have a humble approach to things and you, you realize that you can learn from everyone. I have a little contractor in Pennsylvania that's about the fifth of the size of my company, and I have learned so much watching him, and he's even given me advice that I've used. So we're all in this together. Um, I would encourage everyone watching this, you know, it sounds silly, Seth, but the only difference between a rut and a grave is the depth. If you feel like you're in a rut, stop digging. If the people you're talking to are these folks that get on Facebook and, you know, type out all these horrible things about this governor's terrible and, the, and Trump's terrible and Obama's terrible and everybody's terrible, get away from that. Get around other positive, forward-thinking people that have some fight in them that want to talk about solutions and want to talk about how they can be part of that solution. And I think that's where you can go. So I give a shout out for the whole green industry and everybody that's trying to put their best foot forward and doing the right thing. You know, the, the COVID-19, the safety protocols, follow them. Make our industry look like the winners that most of us feel it is. You don't put three people in a truck and you don't not equip them with hand sanitizers and masks and practice social distancing and everything else. Um, this, this thing is real, and I'm convinced we can do all of our work safely if we practice the proper protocols. I believe that. That's awesome, Marty. I agree. And, and you know, the, the, I love a, a good movie quote, and hearing what you said makes me think of the, the Shawshank Redemption. You get, get busy living or get busy dying. And I feel like a lot of us are, you know, we're getting busy living here. So that, that's good. I agree. We're all in it yeah. together. So well, well said. Well, thank you. Marty, it's great to see you again. I'm sorry we couldn't come out to Cincinnati. Hey, t tell me this real quick. If we would have made it to Cincinnati, when we make it to Cincinnati, where are we going to go get that, that cold beer and dinner? What's, what's, on, what's on the agenda? We're going we're gonna to go to Kruger's, which is a uh, bar and grill that's about two blocks from our office. Um, Emily that lives down and over the Rhine where our office is, she introduced that to us a couple years ago. And it, I don't know what they do to their cheeseburgers and their beer. Um, they have a rooftop that overlooks part of the city, and that would be where we're going when you come back down to see us. I look forward to it, Marty. And is it your birthday on Saturday? It's my birthday Saturday. Yep. I'm hey. 39 years old. Well, it's my birthday on Sunday. So happy birthday. I'll, I'll toast one to you. You toast one to me. Okay. That sounds great. And I'm not 39. I'm lying. That's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll t I'm not 39 either. So <laughs> Marty. Right. Well, you're a good man. Great, great to see you. Great catching up. Thanks for taking the time and uh, look forward to reading your next column in the magazine and we'll stay in touch. Okay. Absolutely, man. You're a good man. Thank you for everything you do. Okay, everybody, Marty Grunder, I'm Seth Jones. Thanks for checking in here with us at Landscape Management.